Welcome to the Spirit Centered Business Podcast, where we blend the spiritual with the practical for supernatural results. Now, here is your host, Berlin Newby. Yeah. Okay, so so Darby and I are pulling a Donna and I, if you guys know the nth degree, we just have conversations and then hit record. So that's what Darby and I are doing right now. Okay, Darby. So we're we're like, oh my gosh, there's so much going yeah. on in the world that people. Yeah, and so, about, so it's so good. Like I'm I'm thinking like, okay, so I'd read these, I'd hear these stories from people in these different groups and they're and they're not a Christian group. And I'm like, well, why are they getting these breakthroughs? Like, what in the world? Like, is that the enemy as the angel of light or is it are they actually applying spiritual truths and working within the spiritual laws and the lord started unraveling for me and i'm not saying i'm i'm fully there yet but what it, kind of the distinction that i have is you know all truth is god's truth he owns all the intellectual property he is the truth okay so we know the enemy can only model after God. There is no other model. There is not another God that he can model after. He has to model after God. And he's going to try to get as close as he can to using the spiritual wiring of who we're created to be to hijack us, you know, and, and, and to the point, I don't even believe that desire, people talk about desires and people get addictions and stuff. I think desire is designed in us. It and we've been, desi- we've been designed with desire. And the only thing an enemy does is he tries to get us to fulfill our desires outside of God. And we know apart right. from him, we can do nothing. Right. So the question that I've been asking is like, how do I invite people on their journey, no matter where they're at in their faith? Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about all roads lead to heaven. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying, oh, you can just choose any path. but uh how is god showing I, my my goal is when i'm working with someone is saying yeah I, I think to myself how is that person experiencing god and how can i help them articulate that right because right. if someone has a breakthrough in their life right like neuroscience okay for instance this is go with neuroscience you can apply these tools and you can be a different person now i know true transformation is Jesus is coming into the faith. I get that. I totally get that. But, but at the same time, like, how is that possible? Well, because there's certain ways that a computer works. Okay. We've heard us use the metaphor of a computer. It's going to work a certain way. And so some people, after a while, we discover, because it's just like the Tower of Babel, they could, they put their minds together and there was nothing there. It was, it was unstoppable for them. And God had to confound what they were doing. Well, obviously there is a positive inverse of that too. You know, Mm -hmm. there are people that are having these discoveries and breakthroughs. Right. Well, why is it working? Well, it's not because I I, I don't think that now I understand there's going to be false signs and wonders. I get that. But I've had people prophesy over me that weren't even Christian. They weren't even they weren't reading cards. They were just saying, this is what I see. And. There's an aspect of people just being spiritual. I've had God speak to through people that were not even believers. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, when I went to go, when, when I went to school at Graham Cook School, the job I was working in, I had gay, lesbian, a- agnostics, atheists. They were my sending away team. They raised up over four hundred and fifty dollars for me to go to a ministry school. You know, mm-hmm. and they were they were saying things, and they were they didn't realize it. You know, we're yeah. spiritual people. Right. You know, is it, yeah. is it, you know, we don't think about it. It has to be a prayer. I, I'm, I'm going to say a prayer and that's it. You know, anyway, I'm, I'm going all over the place here. Yeah, no. Well, this whole conversation started because we were, we were talking about the shaking that's going on and the, the, the war that's literally happening in the spirit realm that we're just oblivious to the, you know, I'm just talking about Joe, Joe Blow mainstream person is oblivious to even though we're designed to we're designed to be plugged into it absolutely designed to not only be plugged in but to orchestrate it exactly co-creators with the lord and and 100 we we keep we've been praying for two thousand years let let your will be done on earth as it is that's it and yet We're yeah. not going into heaven to seeing what his will is, and we're not 
bringing it on earth because we don't know those spiritual mechanisms, the mechanics of literally how the spirit realm works so that we we can use who we are. We are designed so much more beyond the what we understand our capability is, right? Yeah. We, we need to use that to be yeah. his hands and feet on the earth, yeah. but operating from his kingdom in the heavenly yeah. realms. So yeah. that we, when when we have that battery and we are the end of the flashlight that has the light on it, but he's the battery, it's all one flashlight, right? We right. don't have an idea of the impact that we're supposed to be making. We're, right. to, you know, we're stuck in the shackled by comfort of our own Western world. Oh my gosh, right. do we have more faith or, or are we pleading for, oh no, I hope don't things don't change. I hope there's no, um, there, when I go to the store, there's going to be all the food and I hope the gas prices don't go up so high. And exactly. I don't, you know, all of that kind of stuff when, is that God's will or is that our will? And, and I am just as guilty as anybody else. I, I will put up my hand yep. and say, oh my gosh, I do not want to yep. have to you know, rely on raising chickens and rabbits and, and, and having a farm when yeah. I don't have the space. Now, if I had the space, uh, obviously I, I would be into it. I, I, yeah. I am a doorsy person, but, yeah. but there's confinements and, and there's restrictions. If you're living in a cement city and all of a sudden you need to go 20 miles out to the country to get your eggs and, and fresh food because the grocery stores are don't have anything. I mean, there's inconveniences that that probably will have to happen. And are we more sold on trying to stay comfortable than seeking God's will in the shaking? Right. right? Exactly. And, and it's such a hard line. It's so difficult to make that switch because we're just so programmed and so conditioned to look for the easiest way, the most comfortable way, just give me a pill. I don't want to actually work out, you know, give me a, give me some medication. I don't want to change my diet, you know, whatever. I don't want to have to go to the chiropractor and do exercises and stuff like that to get myself yeah. into shape. I just want to once and done and be, you know, whatever instant microwave society. Exactly. Well, and what's happening is, you know, I tell people, I said, is there, are you, do you feel like, do you feel like your world is crumbling around you? Do you feel like you're nervous and anxious and fearful that it, what, it's, what happens is it's showing me that something that you believe is attached to this physical plane. It's attached. Oh, yeah. It's like, you're, right. you're like, I'm tethered. attached to this thing. Right. And that's, what's being shaken. Right. What you got to do is uh, you got, you, you are part of, you are an eternal being in Christ. and when you come from that place, you're, there's a whole lot of shaking going on, but you're not going with it. You right. know, we don't need to go with it. And right. we, we've been trained in our own experience. Well, that's just the way it's always been. And and people are not comfortable. If you really want to get technical, they're not comfortable. They're actually uncomfortable, but they're almost comforted, comforted in their uncomfortability. Right. It's still, still their safety zone and in their comfort zone of uh, at least I know what this discomfort is. Right. Well, and we're trying to, and so the thing is, is that the the the, the challenge I, I see is, is that people, you know, when you, I mean, I've always experienced supernatural things. So I, I, I understand, like, I think that God let me see those things because I'm a little thick sometimes. And he's like, I got to get, make sure this guy really gets it. So like, just because I have a story about seeing angels or whatever, it doesn't mean I'm any more special. It just means that we can operate by faith. And, and, and we don't, and, uh, and faith is a neutral thing. It doesn't have to, oh, and now I believe that, that once you, you activate and you're in faith, that emotions will follow after thinking will follow after. And that, that's the whole idea of embodying what you're believing for and having that frequency, like you were talking about, but it's, it's almost like people don't know, they don't know that they can actually win because they look around themselves. They're like, well, I'm doing better than she's doing. I'm right. doing better than that right. person's doing. Right. And, you know, my thing was when I came back into the faith, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm like, I only want to know what works. I want to know the truth. I really, I don't want fluff. I don't want you to talk about, I don't want you to talk. I mean, I, I'm actually not even impressed. This is going to sound crazy. I'm not impressed by stories 
of you seeing angels and going to heaven if your life looks like hell. <laughs> That's true. Yep, exactly. You know, if it's, yep. I'm not saying that those things aren't cool, but what's your life? But it's look gotta like? look like something. It's gotta yeah. look something. Yeah, I love that. When I got filled with the Holy Spirit, like I gotta, you know, I don't even know how to explain it, but I had uh, Dan McCollum pray for me when I was in the school. And I, I wrestled with the whole idea of like laughter in the Holy Spirit. I didn't believe in manifestations. Hmm. You know what happened to me? I was drunk in the Holy Spirit for three days. Oh, I my couldn't gosh. even I couldn't even I, I'm the guy that you try to push my forehead. Yeah, like you try I'm, to, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm putting my I'm straddling my legs out. You're not going to push me. I don't want fake. I want the real thing. Right, I didn't come right. into this kingdom thing for anything. If it's going to how you know what's going to work and what doesn't work is when the shaking goes when it when it goes on. You either got it intellectually. You think, you know, it. a lot of people say, oh, I know that I've read that verse a thousand times. You think, you know, that. But if you're not experiencing the reality of that, you don't know that. And that's what happened with me. I just I'm real with that. I'm real. I'm like. Obviously, it says, do not fear. Well, do I have fear in my life? Why do I have fear in my life? What lie am I believing? And, right. you know, and really all that is, is it ties us into being coming double minded. It's like yeah. you believe we hold the truth of we hold the truth here. Right. And then we have the unbelief and unbelief is not disbelief. It's just believing the wrong thing. And it, the only thing that can make the word of God null and void in your life is the traditions of men. And, and we look at other people's lives and you know, we're, we're, that's what my grandpa said. And that's what my mom said. And, and you, there's something so much more than what you're living right now. And all okay. it takes is that is, and I encourage people. I say, you know what? I said, maybe you say you have never experienced God this way. That's OK. Ask God. Here's a double dog dare you. Double, triple dog dare you to, to ask God to show himself to you. That's it. Just if that's your only prayer, say that one line. Yeah. And if you don't come back and say that you've had an experience with God, I would be shocked. I had some guy tell me once, he's like, I'm a, he said something, he's some kind of, some kind of like weird kind of religious group, but it was cult or it was like Philadelphia, something weird, something I don't remember. And he's like, dude, I don't, I hear your stories. He's like, I just believe that all, all that Bible stuff is symbolic. It's all metaphor. Mm -hmm. I said, I said, listen, I, I said, I can't, I'm not here to prove to you. I don't fight with you about these things. I said, but you go and ask God to show himself to you. And the next time you see, I see you and the spirit of God doesn't encounter you. I'll give up my faith. Mm -hmm. And he encountered God. Now I'm not telling yeah. everyone to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, you yeah. know? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's good. Well, and I want to pull another thread from before we turned on the recording. We were talking about people having transformation in their lives and having breakthrough outside of Boom. the Lord. That's and right. Actually, you know, and it comes, you and I are both researchers and we and we love looking into into things I've you know I've studied I studied a lot of stuff Joe Dispenza and Greg Braden um, the Divine Matrix and and I take these books that have so much transformation and and amazing spiritual principles and I say Jesus or Father whoever what do you say about this because I know that you designed this principle and here are these people who don't profess to go through Jesus as the only door are getting breakthrough. They're transforming thousands of lives all over the globe. Yeah. What is it about the King's kids? Why are we afraid of this? What makes it that we don't pick these things up? Where is the Christian version, like you mentioned in, in Spirit Center Business in the, during the show, where's the Christian version of these people who are making massive, massive change and shifts in people's lives and transformation. Exactly. And and, and I'm like, Lord, pick me. I will totally be exactly, that. You know? Exactly. Exactly. I, I will do the work. And I I literally was working on myself and, and I was I'm doing the experimentation using these different <laughs> models on myself. Yeah. You know. Right. I actually did the Wim Hof breathing method right? For, and it's, I accidentally lost 10 pounds. I'm like, okay, all right, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it's I've, your spirit lab. It's, it's, 
it's just like, okay, there's so much more beyond what you find in a Christian bookstore where you can find God's truth. Right. And I exactly. think that, well, and here's the thing, people out here, there are Christians that will believe in doctors. Well, that's not written in the Bible. What they're reading Pharmacia. is not in the Bible. Yeah. They'll go, right, 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 right. Exactly. You'll go to those places. Yeah. They'll believe a psychologist for something. Yeah. But as soon as you go into anything metaphysical, which is really our faith, I mean, come on, we're not, this is not just a physical, yep. you know, a physical God is realm. A mystical God and we are mystical people. <laughs> exactly. And I do think there are, there is something about the pragmatic side of like, I, I know for myself, I needed to experiment, try things out, see if they worked. And then I'm like, okay, God, where's your word say about this? Like, right. where does this tie in with your word? Like, you know, the whole idea, you know, I, 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 I'm, one of the things the Lord was showing me is like, well, just because someone's experience, he, 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 what the Lord was telling me was there's different levels of transformation. Mm -hmm. This is the way I kind of look at this is you, you as you, you, you start off with a little T and as you go up, you experience the capital T, which is the truth, is a person, not just a belief it's mm. not just knowledge. It's a person. Mm -hmm. And it says, as people understand the truth, right? The truth will set them free. Mm -hmm. And it, and and to that level of their understanding, it's like people are bumping up against, it's like you heard about that uh, uh, analogy of these blind people with a, with an elephant and how oh, yeah. each one of them are explaining. Yeah. That's what's happening, yeah. you know? And then it just so happens that something works for them. I mean, you don't have millions of people following these people without having some sort of breakthrough. And I also think the other thing about this is sometimes the religious language gets in the way. Like it's we we need a new we need a new lexicon. We don't uh, the, it needs to be we need to get rid of all those things because when I say grace and you say grace, it's it's not the same thing. Right. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, that is so good. Yeah, and and there are, you know, there's Satan does come as the angel of light, right? Because right. Mormons are good people, right? You know, and Shriners do good work. And we were talking about this before the, yep, yep. And, you know, people get into the Masonic Lodge thinking it's just a good boy club. But right. really, the underlying agreements that were made with the kingdom of darkness right. require a price. Exactly. Jesus already paid the price. Right. So if you're coming into agreement with this dark stuff that's just based on the counterfeit dark power, right. you're going to end up paying a price at one point or another. It's really it, it, already it, paid it. So yeah, it's so good. That's so good. The fact that you're talking about it really is about jumping through hoops. Any any kind of religious or whatever kind of group, if they're having you jump through ho hoops, here's the thing: we're not. I understand this 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 word, these words, this terminology is in the church. You're going to different levels. I get what they mean by that, but sometimes our performance based thinking can get in the way. We we think we have to earn something. No, you you're coming from a place of victory, not getting to victory. Mind renewal is really not about like making yourself something. It's actually releasing who you really are. It's you know, and people talk about being. Oh, you're, you know, you 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 know, you hear that in Eastern religions about being. Well, God, I asked the Lord. I'm like, what well, what is this all this about being? He says that's identity being lived out. That's what that is. He mm -hmm. says it's someone living out of their truest essence. You know, it's it's more about getting rid of things than it is adding things to you. And yeah. I think that's a big thing about religion and cults and some the New Age or some of them. It's all about you know, even the spiritual laws. OK, you got mm -hmm. you got, you have um, the, the the course of miracles, you know, and you have these spiritual laws. Yes. These, OK, yeah, Miriam right? Williamson and those guys. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. Gaia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, we here's the thing. We actually have something better than New Age, way right. better than that, because we have a personal God. OK, here's the other thing is with grace, grace covers the potholes of where you're not living fully out of the spiritual laws. It's not that we get rid of spiritual laws by in, being in Christ. It's that the grace of God lifts up, up to a higher place. Yeah. Otherwise, where it's always going to be about our performance. Does that make sense what I'm saying? 
Absolutely. Are you kidding me? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. It's so good. I know we've jumped all over the place, but I love <laughs> to have these kingdom conversations. Um, She's my sister. That's why. We're I talking. know, right? I, we can keep going and going. That's why I listen to your podcast. That's the reason why I reached out to you. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm not pushing this. If you want to connect this, God, I'm going to put the message out there. Uh, and you're the first person I've done that with for a long time. And I'm like, I listened to your podcast. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, seriously, this is my tribe. I got that vibe going, you know, it's like, I got, I, it's what's happening is, you know, we, your eyes start to open up and you start to, and I, 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 I've said this many times. I said for a long time when I was dating, I was dating a different girl with the same with the same, there was a different girl with a different name, but the same person. Yeah. And I thought to myself, why am I dating all of these crazy cat ladies? And I thought it was me. And then I come to realize, oh, there's something in the equation over and over again. It's me. It's this guy. Yeah. And when I start taking ownership of that, and then the Lord started talking about frequencies to me, I've had no one ever talked about frequencies. He's like, I want you to know that who you're meant to be with you're going to start experiencing as you get in healthier relationships, you'll understand the frequency of who they are. Mm -hmm. And that applies to everything that applies to finding your tribe. You yeah. know, you might people that I'm sure people tune in here. They're, they're probably a little bit of rogue. They're a little bit outside the box. They're a little bit, maybe they're a little bit of troublemakers, you know, in religious circles. And honestly, it's more fun that way. So who's gotten kicked out of church? Pick me. <laughs> Who's gotten kicked out of a home group? Me. <laughs> exactly. Ooh, I just awesome. can't keep my mouth shut when I hear yep. anti-biblical stuff. I'm like, yep. sorry, gotta say it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you hear lyrics in songs that they sing sometimes. Like, oh, 100%. Oh, well, that's not even biblical right there. Well, even the whole idea of uh, and, and I, I, one of the things I think one of the worst things that were the most prevalent lies that has really attacked the Western church is the lie that every that 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 it's God's will that evils happened. Oh, and yeah. It's this whole idea of fatalism. God's in control. God's in control is the song I was looking for. Yeah. You know, the whole the whole universe was designed a certain way. The way I compare it, it's like a video game. God designed it a certain way. There's certain laws in that video game. God decided to come down into the in, into, into creation to be a part of this. And I know it's not just a simulation. I get that. But just for the sake of the metaphor, Jesus came. And he had to abide by certain ways of doing things, but he showed us that there's actually something greater than the natural law that he operated out of. He, he was teaching us the way. He was he was teaching us to do that. Not that we ascend above Jesus. There's no, there's no none of that. It's into him. Into him. Yeah. Exactly. That Christ would be formed into us. You could do a lot right. more by accident than you would on purpose by just understanding oneness with God. Yeah. Oh, so rich. So good, Darby. Yeah, this is great. Well, um, <laughs> oh my gosh. So we didn't even start, we didn't even start this as if it were gonna be an episode, but I think we're gonna just have to throw it out there because we want the peeps to hear it, right? Um okay, so maybe we'll we'll record a beginning after the fact. So you will okay. have probably seen the beginning that we pre-recorded after the <laughs> We'll have it edited the other way around. That's awesome. This is why it's so awesome to have like video editing software. <laughs> I know, and a, and a wonderful team. Thank you, Rex, for handling all of the production for Spirit Centered Business. Love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's my amazing producer in, in the Philippines, and he's great. That's so good. Okay, so one more time, convergenceschool.net is yeah. where you can find Darby and get connected to him, connect him with, with him on social media, wherever you can find him. And you guys, if you love this conversation, do share it with your friends, even if it was crazy and deep and eye-opening, <laughs> all of that stuff. If you've got crazy friends, go ahead and share it with them. We, we appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. So good. All right, Darby. Thank you uh, for part three.
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Until next time, stay spirit centered. Peace out. Hey there, SCB peeps. I want to give a huge shout out and deep appreciation and thanks to Candace Benton. She has become a super sponsor for the Spirit Centered Business Show. So I would appreciate you helping me in sending blessings and abundance back to her. Thank you so much, Candace, and you are well loved. Thank you for listening to Spirit Centered Business with Berlin Newby. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. The next age of doing business by being spirit-centered is coming together in collaboration, working with spiritual principles and knowing our destiny. Join our tribe at spiritcenteredbusiness.com, and we'll catch you on the next broadcast. Peace out.